Hello, welcome to another edition of Fun with ATF APIs. Today we are going to be building a trivia game using an API. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, it's a real life trivia game. We don't have to make our own questions. The API will give us the questions. We just have to program it um, so it works. Like right, we got to actually make it so like when you press like the right button, it says you did it right. Maybe if you press the wrong button, it says you did it wrong. Maybe there's a score. I don't know. All sorts of fun things we could do here. Now, just to say why we're doing this, the first thing we learned about APIs is basically just how to fetch back data, get that data, and then display it to the user. Get data, display to user. That was pretty pretty straightforward. That was the Giphy and NASA uh, lessons. The next thing that we did was how to make it look good. So for that recipe API, what we did is we got data, we displayed it to the user, and it looked really good, right? We had those uh, bootstrap components, we had a nav bar, we had everything show up in cars, we had that nice carousel. So we knew how to make it look professional. The last thing is we want to make it interactive. So we not only do we want to like just get data and show it to a user, we want to let the user actually interact with that data. And so we'll be making a trivia game today. So we're going to be using this thing called the Open Trivia Database. You can get to it by either clicking the link in the assignment or the video, but if you just type Google Open Trivia Database, you'll see that you get this API right here. And that's where I was at. All right. So just to tell you, this is the easiest API ever. There is no API key. You don't have to sign up for anything. Like, piece of cake. Look, it even says, use to this API does not require an API key. Huzzah. All you have to do to get the URL is to just answer a few of these questions. So how many questions do you want to get back? You want one, 10? Do you want 100? For us, we just want one. Then you pick what category. So if you just want like Japanese anime and manga questions, pick that, you'll just get that kind of question. I'm gonna go with any category, but you choose whatever you want. Jordy, JT, I know what you guys are gonna pick. You select the difficulty, you could put any difficulty or, or you could just like, I only want hard questions, I don't want easy, you get the point. Let's, I'm gonna keep it at any difficulty. And then just for us, we're gonna only do multiple choice questions, it makes our lives a little easier. Um, and keep this default encoding there. And that's it, you just pick that, and then you say generate API URL, and boom, if you just have to put this into our fetch, like our fetch function, and it will get us some questions. That's it, it'll get us a random question every time. So easy, Not, nothing hard there. So the next part of this is, we are gonna go to our API fetch template and we're gonna remix this. And now this time we're actually going to customize this a lot. We're not going to be using oh, I need that orange. We're not going to be using a lot of things here already. So let's customize this for our purposes. First thing in the title, let's make this trivia API. Okay, call it trivia game. Yeah, let's call it trivia game. This H1, let's call this trivia game as well. Great. Now here's the deal. We're not searching anything, so we don't need the input. Right, we're just gonna be getting questions. The user doesn't have any input on that. So let's take that out. And we don't have a search button because we're not searching anything. The, the questions are just gonna be kind of like auto-generate. So let's take out that button. And also the content we don't need. And I'll explain why, because really we're just gonna have a set few things that we're gonna show the user. We are gonna show them one, what kind of category it's from. That's nice. All right, so we're gonna say category. Two, we're gonna show them the difficulty. So we're gonna say ID equals difficulty. And this is where we'll show them the difficulty of the question. Uh, let's copy this and do another one, another P tag. And then also I'm gonna, we're gonna show them the question. So that's the first three things. So we're gonna get a category, a difficulty of the question and the question itself. And we're gonna display those three things to the user. Got it? Um, yeah, got that. The next thing is we need four buttons. Since it's a multiple choice, there's like four buttons that we need to put. And this is where we'll fill in the four different answer choices we get back from the API. So here's what we do. We're gonna say button with an ID equals to answer one. Close that. Take this guy, copy and paste it three more times, and just change this to answer two, three, and four. Please don't copy and paste the buttons inside of each other. Like keep doing them after each other, like after, after, after. And then let's format the file so it looks good. So you should have three P tags and four buttons that have answer one, two, three, and four as their IDs. All right, 
So this is going to look pretty ugly. There's really not much going on there. Boom. That's it. That's this is what our website is right now. The API will fill in all of this data. Okay. Now more customizations to come. These are great orange. Um, I go to script.js, and here's the deal. Once again, we don't have a search button, right? The user doesn't click a search button. The, it just automatically pops up. So we could take out that search button. The second thing is, since we don't have a search button, we don't need an event listener. So let's take that out too. So all we're really left with right now is the send API request where we request the data, and then we do something with the data. No, great orange. What we want to happen is when the user comes to our website, they get a question, like automatically. They shouldn't have to ask for it. It should like just be there when they get there. So how this works is that when someone goes to our website, we are going to run the send API request function the minute they get there, all right? The way we do that is just using this thing called window.onload. Window.onload lets you run a function when someone loads our window or loads our website. So we're gonna say equals, and you pick the function you wanna run. We wanna run send API request. Just like that, no parentheses, straight up. And what this is saying is, when the user lands on our web page, run this function automatically. Great, here's our function. Oops, show that. And Okay, so here's our function. And as before, all we have to do is, we don't need an API request. We're just gonna fetch from that URL we got earlier, which is this guy. Boom, boom, boom. And just to take a quick look, you'll see that this is the endpoint, right? And then it says question mark, the amount, right? That's the first parameter, we want one, and the type, we only want multiple choice. Okay, now that we do that, let's see if we get a response. So really, this should already be there when we look at our website because the, the it already ran the function. Watch, let me show you. So if we open the console, we should see something there. Console, look, we got a response. Just to show this, because like if I reload the page, remember when I reload the page, it now runs the function again, and we get a response. We got a 200 response. We're good to go. Okay, let's get our data. So we'll say let data equal await uh, response.json. Ugh, I'm typing. Terrible. And then let's console log our data. So console.log data. And let's see what we got something back. Oh, it's already there. So we got a response, good to go. Let's see the response we got back. We got results. We got this thing that says zero because it's really just an array. Like they give you all your questions in an array. We only want one question, so it's at zero. Boom. So this one is an entertainment question. It's a multiple choice. The difficulty is easy. There's something here about the HBO series. And then you'll see that you get a correct answer and you get three incorrect answers. And those incorrect answers are in another array. We'll talk more about that in a second. But this is it. We got our data back. That's my happy I got API data, API data back. All right, let's do something with this. So going back here, we're going to use our API data. So we're gonna use API data. Okay, and here's where we're gonna use it. We're gonna use our we're gonna use our use API data function. Whew. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to display to the user um, the category it's in. Right, we want the user to know the category. I think it's nice to do. I don't have to. We'll do it. So you'll see here. We're just gonna go like this. We're gonna copy the property path, and then we go like this. So document dot query selector. Ooh. Hashtag. You might remember we called this category. So in this p tag with the ID of category, we're going to show the category. So we're going to say category um, dot inner inner HTML. Oh my gosh! Equals um, back ticks. We're going to say category, and then let's do interpolation, and let's do data dot and copy what we pasted. Great, so it's results zero. Remember, we don't want those double quotes. Category, and let's see if this works. Let's see if the category is on the screen. Hey, look at that, it worked. Sweet. The next thing we wanna show the user is the difficulty. So let's just copy and paste this and just change two things. So 
The next P tag had the ID of difficulty. Check it if you don't believe me. So difficulty. And to get this um, to show up, okay, instead of category, it's results zero dot difficulty. If you don't believe me, once again, look at the data you got back. And let's see here. Look. Oh, it says category medium. We got to change that to difficulty. Difficulty. All right, and the last thing we want to show them is a question. So once again, we go here. We're going to change this to question. Once again, if you're wondering where I'm getting these from, you might remember the ID where we're going to put the question as an ID of question. Really? Yeah. So we put question here, and we change this to question because, well, if you look at the data, you'll see the questions there. So if we look here, Great, we got video games, difficulty medium, and then we got this, diff not difficulty. Wow, geez, seeks, get this right. Question, beautiful. So this is looking good so far. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna put the answers into these four buttons. Now, here's a little thing. The correct answer will always go on this first button, the way we're programming it, and the wrong ones will always be here. Hopefully you can change that up a little bit. But let's just quickly do that. So the way we're gonna do it is this. So let's just copy and paste everything we see here and let's paste it down the line. Now that first button, you might remember, has the ID of answer one. So we're gonna change this to answer one. And you can take out a lot of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the interpolation. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna just do data results zero. And the correct answer is actually labeled correct underscore answer. If you look here, shiatsu is the, answer, the correct answer to whatever this is. Now, let's look at the, the the data you get back again. You see, correct answer is pretty easy to access because it's just correct answer. The incorrect answers are all in another array, so it, like, it goes a level deeper. So what we have to do is actually open this up, and we wanna like copy the path from this first incorrect answer. So copy property path. Um, Oops, actually, let's do this. Copy this, one, two, three. We're gonna change this to answer two, answer three, and answer four. And then we're gonna, oops, let's do that again. So let's get that incorrect answer. Um, yeah, this one, Venga Boys. Man, this is a great question already. By the way, it is the Venga Boys. Wait, it's not the Venga Boys? Aqua. Okay, copy property path. For the second one, for answer two, let's copy that in here. So boom, take out these double quotes of the first array, take out the double quotes of this incorrect answers one. Okay, and then, oop, forgot the data dot. And just take this and copy down two more. Boom, so this is one, oh, that's zero, one, and two, and let's take a look here, and we got it. So our trivia game is showing all the information we need, and we got these four buttons that the user can click. But we want them to actually see if they get the question right, or if they get the question wrong. So let me show you how to make a question right button, and if I have time, I'll show you how to make the question wrong button. So when they click this button, I want them to be alerted that they have the, got the question right, and it's gonna give them a new question. So quickly, this is how it's done. So we're gonna say um, let correct button equal document dot query. Oh my gosh, my typing is awful. Dot query is for answer one. Because right now we're always putting the answer, the correct answer in answer one, and that's it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say correct button dot add event listener. And we're gonna say click and then we'll do an anonymous function like that. And so when they click the correct button, we will send them an alert that says, correct, you are so smart. And then after that alert, we will then rerun the send API request. So that what we'll do is like, it'll rerun everything and then it'll generate a new question. So send API request. Let's try that. So when I go like, oh, so I'm gonna do hashtag there. 
And when I click the right answer, which shows the first one, correct, it works. And look.